Back in 2012, engineers from Microsoft, PayPal, Yahoo and Google met to create a bulletproof email authentication method. And by the end of the day, they released DMARC to the world. Welcome to Mailtrap Videos, where we share email deliverability tips. Here is our guide on DMARC email authentication. Hello there, I'm Grigori from Mailtrap. So what is DMARC? The main based message authentication reporting and conformance, or DMARC for short, not only has the most complicated name of all three email authentication methods, meaning SPF, DKIM and DMARC, but is also the most effective one. And it is quite easy to understand why. DMARC record combines the functions of DKIM and SPF to perform a more advanced check on each received email. With DMARC, a domain owner can specify its own authentication procedure. That procedure is known as DMARC policy. With a DMARC policy, the domain owner can instruct an incoming server on what to do if an email fails to pass the DMARC test. Afterwards, the policy can provide a detailed report of each check to improve the process as well as immediate warnings if anyone spoofs the account. Now, let us see how does DMARC work. DMARC requires SPF or DKIM records to be set. Or in the best case, both. You see, when an email is received, a receiving server does a DNS lookup and checks if there's an existing DMARC record. DKIM or SPF is performed as usual. But if you do not know or would like to learn more about SPF, I do recommend you watch our SPF email authentication guide or read our article on the MailTraps blog. Both of those links are in the description below. But back to where we were. After DKIM or SPF is performed, a receiving server then performs a so-called alignment test. It verifies if, in the case of SPF, the envelope from address matches the return path address. Now, in other words, it checks if the email address of the message is the same as the address a reply would go to. In case of DKIM, the value behind the D tag, which is the send as a domain, matches the domain an email was sent from. Now, of course, if both authentications are set, both alignment tests are performed. The alignment test requirements can be strict or relaxed. It is strict when the domains must precisely match each other, and it is relaxed when different subdomains are allowed. DMARC will be successful in the following scenarios. If only one of the authentication methods is set, its check must be successful alongside with the respective alignment test. And if both methods are set, one of them needs to be successful in the respective alignment test, but both are not required. Notice how DMARC will still succeed even if, for example, DMARC along with DMARC alignment test fails, but SPF and its alignment succeeds. But let us assume that an email failed the DMARC check for whatever reason. DMARC lets you instruct an incoming server on what should happen to an email that failed a check. We call those options policies and there are three of them in total. Let us quickly review them. The first policy is called none and it means that an email should be treated the same as if no DMARC was set. Here a message can be still delivered but it'll be put in spam or discarded based on other factors. This typically is used to watch the environment and analyze reports without influencing your email deliverability. The second policy is called quarantine and it means that an email is allowed to be sent but will not end up in the main inbox and most likely will end up in the spam folder. The third policy is simply called reject. It instantly discards the message that failed the check. Simple as that. Now the good thing is that these policies can be customized. You can instruct a server on how to behave in for example with the quarantine policy. You can tell them that only 10% of sent emails that failed the check can go to the spam folder and other 90 can simply be ignored. Now, do know, just because you instruct a server on what to do, it does not mean that it will follow your advice. But it still puts you in far bigger control than in case of DKIM or SPF email authentication methods. Finally, a receiving server will send reports of each failed DMARC verification with aggregate data about unsuccessful checks. That is valuable for analyzing the performances of your messages to keep you updated if any phishing attempts occur. Now we shall look at an example of a DMARC record and properly observe it. There's a lot of details involved, so do prepare yourself for it. So, what does a DMARC record look like? Let us have a DMARC record example explained. And instead of relying on dummy data, we'll use a record of Square, a unicorn provider of financial services for small businesses. Many cyber criminals probably dream of spoofing their emails, so it is no surprise they chose to protect themselves with DMARC. Here, you can see an example of a DMARC record. If needed, you can access this DMARC record by locating the link in the description below. The site will also show you DMARC records for any other domains, given of course it has been configured. Let's go through each tag mentioned above to properly understand them. 
V equals DMARC1 is the identifier of the DMARC version, and it should always be included in the DNS record since the receiving server will search for it. If this identifier is missing or is modified in any way, the whole verification process will be skipped. P equals reject indicates the selected policy. You do remember the policies I mentioned previously, right? Well, the policy Square chose is to reject all emails that fail the DMARC check. Of course, they might still be delivered, but a strict order will be sent to the receiving server not to allow such messages. The three addresses you see in the code snippet here will be receiving daily aggregate reports about the emails that failed the verification. This will be a high-level data about the reasons of failures without giving them any details of each. Each address must have a mail to tag before them. The code snippet alone, on the other hand, is an email address where the individual forensics reports will be sent in real time, including the details of each failure. As is actually the case, there is a number of optional fields that can be added to customize your DMARC record. Now, let us have a look at some of those optional DMARC record tags for you to know exactly how to customize your DMARC record. The tag PCT is used to establish the percentage of failed emails that the set policy should comply with. As in the example we saw, you could only send 10% of emails to the quarantine. The value should be a number between 1 and 100. With the SP tag, you set a specific policy for emails sent from subdomains. For example, P equals none, you could only choose to ignore failed emails sent from the main domain, but quarantine those sent from subdomains. ADKIM tag is an approach that helps determine the level of strictness DMARC should have when comparing the sender's domain against the DKIM's D tag. As mentioned earlier, strict and relaxed are the possible options, but by default, the approach is relaxed. ASPF provides a similar option, but solely for the SPF alignment. You decide whether you want SPF to aim for the perfect match of the envelope from domain and the return path address, or if subdomains of the envelope from domain should also be allowed. Similarly, strict and relaxed are the options. With the RI tag, you set the intervals on how often you want to receive aggregate reports. The value is expressed in seconds, so by default it's uh, 8600 4000, which is every 24 hours. The FO tag sets the settings for the forensics reports. You can choose to send the report if zero, if all underlying checks fail to return a positive DMARC result, one, if any mechanics fails, D, if DKIM failed to verify, and S, if SPF failed to verify. By default, it's zero. It is important to understand what is the purpose of each tag to correctly set your DMARC record. So let us see how exactly to set and implement your DMARC record. The whole process comes down to the three following steps. Validating if SPF or DKIM is set up and the domains align, generating a DMARC record and specifying its settings, and adding it to a domain's DNS records. Let us discuss these three steps in a bit more detail so that we can understand them better. First, verify if DKIM or SPF are set up properly. As mentioned earlier, having either of them is vital for DMARC to work, but having one of them that returns negative results for legitimate emails will also do no good. If you only have SPF set, check at the following two match. Envelope from address, the address emails are sent from, and the return path address, the address's emails will be directed to if a recipient responds to an email. If you only rely on DKIM, check at the following two match. Envelope from address, the address emails are sent from, and the DTAC of your DKIM record. After that, choose an email account for receiving DKIM records. A great thing about DMARC is that when you are setting it up, your server starts sending you daily reports on how your emails have performed. As mentioned, it sends separately aggregate and forensics reports. This way, you can quickly spot any abnormalities and improve the performance when needed. Now, do remember that the data is sent in a raw format, which is not too easy to read, and you might want to use tools like DMARCian or MX Toolbox to get the most out of your data. Then generate the DMARC record. DMARC.com recommends a number of resources for this task. There are several tags we discussed that you need to use in your record and a number of optional ones. Note that the P tag, meaning policy, will be directly represented in the previous step. Finally, add the DMARC record to your domain's DNS. Once you have your DMARC record, you can go ahead and add it to your domain provider's DNS records. In the domain registrar, you need to add the newly created DMARC record as a text type record. As an example, I'll show you how to do it with GoDaddy. Go to my products page and select the DNS of the domain you'd like to add the DMARC to. Find and press the add button to add a new record. Select text under type, type underscore DMARC under name, and if you are using MailTrap, you can simply copy and paste the pre-made DMARC record right here. In the email sending dropdown, select the domain you are using, and here is your pre-made DMARC record. Just press copy and paste and head back to GoDaddy and add it into the value box. 
Press the add record to confirm the action. But to understand the DMARC email authentication properly, it is important to know what it can and cannot do. With that in mind, let us bust some three major DMARC myths. Some believe that DMARC is set for security reasons alone. That, however, is partially true. DMARC indeed aims at preventing spoofing and phishing, however, there is much more to DMARC than that. DMARC enforcement policies and advanced reporting capabilities significantly improve legitimate email delivery. They help build and increase brand trust and analytics, thus DMARC is quite a boost to any marketing campaign. There is also a belief that DMARC is just for the domains that send email which is not true. The fact that your domain does not send email does not mean that it cannot be impersonated. In fact, the more famous your brand is, the bigger risks it has to attract any email agents. The receivers of malicious emails from your brand will most likely not be able to identify that your domain is not configured for sending email. As a result, you'll have to face many unpleasant consequences concerning your reputation and credibility. You could also hear that setting DMARC policy to none is good enough for email security, which is incorrect. Setting DMARC policy to none policy is usually the first step to make sure that the DMARC reporting and delivery is set right. That, however, does not improve your security or help you protect your domain from being impersonated. Eventually, to make the best out of your DMARC security and marketing enhancements, you will need to arrive at a policy of at least quarantine or best of all, reject at PCT100. Moreover, you should decide to move with the times and adopt a buy me as a latest brand authentication strategy. Your DMARC record should be set to reject policy to be qualified as the buy me certification. Do read more about buy me on our MailTrap blog. Link available in the description below. With all of that in mind, there might still be a question on why should you use DMARC? DMARC is the most effective way to protect yourself from spoofing and hopefully with our explanation you now understand why. In 2018, HMRC estimated that a number of phishing emails sent from the domains decreased by 500 million in just a year and a half after the implementation of DMARC. There are two major DMARC benefits to consider. Cybercriminals are much more likely to give up on trying to spoof a domain if they see a properly configured DMARC record in the domain's DNS. The receiving servers also know that emails coming from a DMARC secured domains are much more likely to be legitimate than those secured with just one of the other email authentication methods, not to mention those without any security. To summarize, email security should never be underestimated. The bigger you are, the more you have to lose if someone spoofs your accounts and tricks your customers into something you probably wouldn't approve of. Given how easy it is to add each method and how much you gain by them, there's really little to no reason to not give them a try. What's absolutely wonderful about DMARC is that you can start with a non-policy and observe what happens. This basically means that your emails will go through the relevant checks on the receiving side, but if they fail, it won't influence your email deliverability. On top of that, you'll receive tons of data via DMARC reports so you can quickly identify if someone is trying to spoof your domain or if a problem lies on your side. You can use this data to improve your processes and you'll see the results in no time. And that's all. You now have learned the DMARC meaning and definition, understood the DMARC protocol and had a DMARC report explained alongside its record with its numerous detail. You now can set up DMARC and authenticate your emails efficiently. Thank you for watching our guide on DMARC email authentication. This was provided to you by MailTrap email delivery platform. Test, send, control with MailTrap. If you found this video useful, do like and subscribe. More email delivery content on the way. See you there.